Well, thank you guys uh, very much. Uh, it's very humbling uh, to be here today and uh, uh, very special. Um, the, the very kind words uh, to have my friends uh, speaking today. And uh, it's, this was harder to prepare for than, than anything I've, any speech or anything I've ever done. Um, I thought it'd be easier. I've seen a few on TVs over the years or when I was younger. Um, and it, it's, it's, uh, it's different. Uh, playing in the NHL, it's not something um, that you're excited to get a congratulations for retiring. You know, it's, it's an amazing job. And I remember starting hockey at age seven and going to my first tryout and dreaming of how great it would be. And it's been even better. These, these 20 years in the NHL, it's been better. And um, I'm excited for retirement and to be with my family, but um, I'm going to miss, miss all of you and all of this and um, so many great memories. And that's the ad lib part. I'll start with my, uh, <laughs> my, my speech. But um, really, truly, thank you all for coming. And, and it's so nice to, to see so many familiar faces and be back here in Calgary. Um, I want to thank. Uh, uh, the Flames and the, the great ownership group. Um, you guys have been so good to my family and I over the years. It was a true honor playing here. Um, you guys were so kind. Uh, Longtime President Ken King, um, you know, to, to give us our family this opportunity. It, uh, it was very special. Um, and it's something that uh, Connie said. It was a little bit, you know, it it's, uh, would have been easier to just, um, you know, to maybe not have to do a speech. <laughs> but after thinking about it, it was, I was so excited to be here and my family and share it with everybody and to come back to the city of Calgary and say thank you. It's, uh, this is home. Come back to Alberta to, to be here, to say thank you to the fans and to the great organization that, that is the Calgary Flames and uh, so many great memories here. Um, and, and some people, um, it has taken me a while to announce my retirement. My son is yawning here. Uh, putting some pressure on me. I'll get going with it. I played for five organizations, and each one was an honor, and it was a great privilege and a great adventure for my family and I. But spending the 16 years with the Calgary Flames, a great organization, thank you so much for embracing me at 18 years old and as a city. And then even though I was from Edmonton, nobody held it against me. You know, but you guys as ownership group, you guys set such a great example for us as players to come here. Uh, you welcomed our families into your homes. Uh, so many nice barbecues. We'd see you guys at the rink. We'd see you around. You were a part of it. Your humility, your generosity. It was a, a great example to follow as players. And thank you very, very much. Um, you know, also to get the chance to play here in, in Alberta. You know, it was something growing up in Edmonton, St. Albert. Uh, great minor hockey, strong minor hockey program. But to get to play in Alberta was a real treat. Uh, to be on the right side of the Battle of Alberta, right? <laughs> But no, seriously, there, there are some, it's an amazing group. Your fan knowledge here, um, your passion for the game, it, make, it has made it an amazing place to play and to be and to grow up, to live and to start a family. So thank you guys uh, very much for that. Um, and as a forward, as a forward, I love to score goals. There's no question about that. And I got to score a decent amount in the NHL. And every time I saw it, the puck go in, it was, it was a thrill. But I know I couldn't do it nearly amount without playing with some of the great players that I got to play with, some of the great playmakers. And they're not always appreciated. You know, we get to put up our hands, we get to celebrate with our teammates, but I couldn't have done it without playing with guys like Connie. Um, you're, you're busting, uh, I, I won't say that phrase, but um, <laughs> um, you give me a hard time, but you, you amaz um, you're better than I thought you were going to be on the first day, okay? <laughs> Way better. And it was a true privilege and an honor to play with you. You were so good in your own zone. Uh, you should have. You were up for Selkies, but you should have won them. And you know, playing with you, I didn't have to skate backwards. <laughs> You're always looking for me. You sometimes got in trouble for passing to me too much, but I loved it. <laughs> one of the one of the best playmakers. You made me a better player. Guys like Alex Tange, a magician with the puck. Um, you know, Christian Nuselius, If you get you know his stick handling. Damon Lankow, a great two-way center. I played with some really, really good players that, that made me better. And uh, uh, it was really, really appreciated. And I don't think you always got the credit that, that you guys always deserved. Um, and, and another group of guys. I played with so many great teammates in the NHL. Uh, 
are the enforcers. I played with some, we've always had some good, tough teams in Calgary, and I appreciate that. And I played with some great enforcers over the year. Coming into the uh, NHL at 18 can be pretty intimidating, and especially, uh, you know, the game is not quite as intimidating now, but it's still, you know, back then when you came in, there was more fighting, it was more intense, and it was so nice to be able to look down the, the bench and see like Sandy McCarthy when I was a rookie, one of the toughest guys to play in the game, and a great guy on and off the ice. Or, or in our 04 run, we had Oliwa, his energy with, with Simon, who could score the big goals, but be as tough as ever. You know, Vandermeer I saw in the video. Big Reggie back there, I know he was an enforcer, but you know, a young Darian Hatcher. It was so nice to have that toughness. Um, you know, Brian McGratton, where he'd lift the team with his great fights, and he was truly one of the scariest guys around. But, um, <laughs> you know, it was, it was much appreciated, and it, gave, it made us bigger as players. And um, another, you know, job that I don't always think gets the full recognition and how you, when you feel when those guys are on your bench and how much bigger you are. So thank you guys. That, that was uh, great to play with all of you. Um, you know, I think back to some of my best memories. I just want to share a few with you. Um, and it's got to be playing my first game in the NHL. Uh, one of them is, uh, anyway, it's when I, when I first got, I played with Kamloops Blazers. We came here. Uh, we lost out the night before. Some of you may have heard the story before. But we, uh, maybe not all the stuff, but um, we had a game the next morning in Calgary. We had a, it was a 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock game. We lost out in Kamloops. They told us, they told me I was going to play, or not play, but I was going to come up. So I said, okay, well, I can go out to our team party, right? You can... <laughs> You got to go out and celebrate the end of the year party with the, with the guys, and um, but so I got I flew in and I remember being on the plane going well, uh, at least you know maybe at least I'm not playing right, but I got off the plane. Brian Burke uh, or Mike Burke got me, took me to Al McNeil's office, signed my first contract um, with Al Coates. Thanks, Coatesy, for trading for me and helping me sign that first contract. Um, it was uh, it was so surreal and getting a chance to go down and within 12 hours I'm playing with Theron Fleury on the line, German Titoff, playing against Chelios in the corners, face-offs against Roenick, uh, shooting on Ed Belfort. It was, it was almost like a video game, and it was so surreal, and it was something that I never, ever will forget, and the passion and the energy and starting a first game in the playoffs, uh, that's got to be, I mean, that's something that, that I'll never, ever forget being here. Uh, other, other special memories, obviously winning the two, two uh, gold medals with Canada. Both of them were very special. I remember walking into the room and in Salt Lake and getting to see Lemieux's jersey and Iserman's jersey and Sackick's jersey. And then over on a makeshift bench is my jersey and <laughs> Smith and, and, and Simone Gagne, were the youngest. You couldn't even see our full name tags. But that was all right. I thought it was so cool to play with those guys and the guys that I watched growing up. And they were, they were unbelievable professionals. They made us feel a part of it as young guys. They showed us a great example, um, you know, and, uh, Theo Fleury was on that team. It, it, was, it was so special, that, that uh, tournament, and to win it for Canada, the first uh, as part of the men's team, the first in 50 years. But also Vancouver. That was something that was, it was different. I was an older guy on that team. Um, you know, and the way that final game gone, the, the, the city had celebrated, uh, you know, for two straight weeks in Vancouver, they found reason to celebrate every day, all the time, 24 hours, and it was, it was pretty awesome. But, you know, that final game, the way it went, when we were up a goal and we're, you're counting down the time, not really, not supposed to, but you are, and there's about a minute left and you're holding on to this lead and they score. U.S. scores against us in the finals. Now we've got to go back in the room, regroup, and it's pretty quiet, um, but then guys start getting it going again and you start, you know, you're trying to manage those nerves and that anxiety and that, the energy in the building, but we know when we go back out there, no matter what happens in that period, we're going to remember it for the rest of our lives. And thankfully, it went the right way. Crosby scores. You know, we're grown men throwing our gloves off, hugging each other, you know, uh, you know screaming, and, and the way the city and the country, that was a memory that I never, ever will forget. Um, but saying that, it, uh, one of the, you know, maybe the best is still the year of 2004. I know we've heard a lot about it, but it was so special to me and the group of guys that we had, the sense of humors. Um, you know, Noodles played with us there, and, he got traded at the deadline, but he had already put his imprint on us and the culture and his, his jokes and his roasts. Every day you came to the, the rinks, if you had a, a hair out of place, he would notice, you know, and you were, you were going to, if you had a shirt that was maybe borderline, it was hanging. Maybe Rhett was hanging it up, and he had a lot of uh, borderline shirts, Rhett. But we had so many uh, great personalities, young Commodore with his big hair 
and his, his energy. It was just, we had so much fun together, Mika, Reggie. Um, and it was a special year. It was the first year we made the playoffs in a long time. And then with the way the playoffs went, we did things we weren't supposed to do. We had some great vets, obviously Jelly, uh, you know, Dave Lowry with us during, you know, on the team. And we knocked off Vancouver in game seven. And I'll, you know that story, uh, we were in the room and it was pretty quiet and you, Connie kind of touched on it. There was something going on in the corner. Me and Connie talked to each other and I, you know, I'm probably my head down at the start. I missed that open net. How are we here? And Connie, Connie taps me and he says, Jerome, and I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I really could use something here from my good friend. And he goes, I'm not, and this is maybe the, the slightest exaggeration. How did you miss that open net? And I'm like, I'm like, really? We're going to talk about this right now? Like, come on. And then, you know, we, we got refocused, but we got it. And we got refocused. This is a nice guy that Connie is. You know, he has an unbelievable guy, but he does have a temper. And, uh, and I felt it there. But we got focused and jelly with that big overtime goal, uh, moving through them. And I remember moving on to Detroit. And now that we, were, we beat Vancouver, we moved on to Detroit. And I remember sitting on the bench. It was the end. We lost the first game. It was two days later after Vancouver or something. Brett Hall just scored, made it 5-1 or something. And I sat on the bench, and I was sitting you know, by myself. Daryl, I wasn't going anymore. Daryl didn't play us at some time, certain points, when it wasn't going as well, <laughs> giving us a break. But uh, and I remember thinking to myself, and you're not supposed to say this, right, as one of the leaders on the team, I'm like, well, at least we beat Vancouver. <laughs> you know? But you know, it got so much better, obviously. Kipper stood on his head. What a goalie. Um, he absolutely dominated that series. We won the next game, like one nothing on Nielsen's goal. Uh, just so many, he, he frustrated their team and we, somehow we beat him. They had so many legends on that team and what a great Detroit Red Wing team we were able to knock off. Um, and Jelly again, eliminated game six. I'll never forget that. The, um, got that picture at home too. That, that was cool, Jelly uh, behind the, um, the net cheering. And then we were able to move on. We had obviously great coach in Daryl Sutter. Um, and we were able to knock his old team off and get to the finals. And um, it, it was awesome. You know, it, it was also the way the city was with us the whole way. The city, um, you know, we started the, the red. They started the uh, uh, Sea of Red tradition. And they were so loud in the, the calls, you know, in the Saddle Dome. And also the uh, Red Mile parties. There were some great ones. It was unbelievable to watch on TV. I didn't get to go to too many. But again, I heard that Rhett and uh, Kami are here. If you, I know they made a couple of them. If you have any questions for that later, they made their share. But it was, it was just such a great, and even some Edmonton, Edmonton fans we got from uh, the Oilers were cheering for us in that run. So it was so special the way the city and all the things. I know it didn't turn out the way, and it stung not winning. And it still does a bit, uh, to be honest, but it was worth it. And I would do it all over again in a heartbeat. And it was so special with that great group of guys. Um, I just have a few thank yous. I uh, want to say, um, you know, I think of the coaches, uh, the, the coaches that I had in my career. I had some great ones. Some people say I had too many, um, but no, I didn't. It was, they all made, had their imprint on me and uh, our team that we had. They all had different philosophies, different intensities, uh, different teaching styles. And I look forward uh, to coaching our kids and uh, their teams and trying to pass on some of that knowledge. Uh, although I do know I won't be able to use some of those uh, motivational one-liners that Daryl or Mike Keenan uh, would occasionally use. <laughs> they were great, and I wanted to say thank you to all my coaches. Um, I played with some amazing players here. Uh, the rookie season, I think, for any player is so special, and uh, I had a great group of guys here when I broke in. Uh, Theo Fleury, watching him up, him up close, his intensity, his passion for the game, the way he competed night in, night out. Uh, he was inspiring, and he, made, he left a big imprint on me. Uh, Ron Stern, James Patrick, taking uh, you know under their wing, Dave Gagne um, in my first five years. Jelly with his work ethic, he's still in better shape than he was always in better shape than all of us when we played, when we didn't play. Um, still in awesome shape in the way he worked, and it was it was inspiring to try to follow these guys. Dave Lowry with his work ethic, um, and and try to follow them in their paths. And uh, I was very fortunate. I want to say thank you to all of them. And uh, also, you know, growing up. You know, when I tried out for that first team at age seven, I was put in the worst league. I, 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 you know, I wasn't very good when I started. But I did, when I did go to tryouts, just to give you an idea that 
the, the, the cards were stacked against me. Uh, my grandpa took me to my first tryout. We didn't know that there was no jersey, no, uh, no socks. So I skated around. And the first, everyone has their outfits. It's good players. They've been playing for years the first time. I'm skating around with no, no jersey, no socks. My grandpa had to run and get me, uh, get me a jersey from the sports store in St. Albert. And uh, so while I was out there wheeling around, and uh, he brought back one. And I wasn't that thrilled uh, to get it, but it was a Calgary Flame jersey. I don't know if it was the last one left at the time, but I'm sure thrilled he got it. <laughs> so I think not wearing a jersey to start and a Flame jersey after worked against me, and I ended up in the worst league. But I played in St. Albert. It was a great, great minor hockey, strong program. And I appreciate that. I want to say thank you to them, that with all the coaches and, and the great players that I played with. I have some friends here that I started playing with at age nine. And, and you know, hockey's been great in the NHL. It's spectacular. But it was also fun growing up through minor hockey. And some of my best friends uh, are from those days. And I uh, appreciate all the support over the years and through my career, uh, uh, sharing with a small, you know, some of the journey with me. Uh, I'll wrap up. Um, I don't want to be done now, right? I'm not going to get many chances like this again. <laughs> but um, I really do want to say uh, um, thank you to my uh, mom, my dad, um, my late grandparents. You guys were so instrumental in, in giving me a love of sports and competing. And um, more, than, more than hockey and just getting me into hockey, you guys have always loved and encouraged me and, and supported me no matter what. And I never played a bad game in their eyes. They truly never, ever told me I played a bad game. And I really appreciate that. And I know I did. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd also like to say thank you to my wife, Kara. She's been with me um, the whole way, the whole journey. And our, our wonderful kids, Jade, who's getting grumpy now, I could look down and see. And, <laughs> and Joe and Tej. Um, I look forward to. Uh, I know you'd love me to play forever, and, um, but I look forward to being home with you and many new seasons with you guys and a few games of Fortnite. Moderation, though. <laughs> All right. And, and finally, I, I, you know, I think of kids. I think of um, um, if there's any kids out there who are, are close and competing and want it, you know, to, to making it and wondering if the sacrifices are worth it. Uh, I assure you they are. Work as hard as you can. Give it your best. It's a wonderful, wonderful game to be a part of um, all the way through. And um, I, again, I want to say thank you to the city of Calgary, uh, the great fans of Calgary. You really left an imprint on my family and I. You were very kind to us. The Flames ownership, again, uh, I can't speak it enough, and um, the Calgary Flames. It's been an awesome, awesome experience. Thank you to my teammates. I'm sorry if I left anyone out. Uh, thank you to the whole hockey community. It is a great one to be a part of. Thank you so much.